Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of AWS reInvent 22 from Vegas. We're at the Venetian Expo Hall. With, we're hearing north of 50,000 people. I know we've been giving you different numbers, but that's kind of what we've settled on here. Hundreds of thousands are watching online. This is a huge event. People, John Furrier, Lisa Martin, are ready to be back. Yes, it's a really great show. A lot of change going on at Amazon. They're continuing the innovation, continuing to grow. The theme this year is data, security, and their partner ecosystem, which is continuing to, to grow. Their partners are filling the gaps on solutions, and it's just a whole nother, I think, partner-friendly cloud, this next-gen wave that's coming is really the next segment. I think speaks to that. I'm looking forward to this. It does. We're going to be digging into that partner network. We've got two guests. One of them is an alumni, Reza Horneman, SVP Global Cloud at TD Cynix. Great to have you back. Wow. Sujiu Farache joins us as well, the Chief Strategy Officer at TD Cynix. Welcome to the program. Thank you, thank you for having us. Great to be back in person, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, Amazing. that is a great The experience. energy here has been high at the highest level since we came here Monday, Monday night, which is great. Sergio, I want to start with you. Last year when you guys were on the show, Tech Data. Tech Data's been around a long time, now you're TD's mm -hmm. next. Talk a little bit about that, what's new, that transformation. Yeah, that, that is correct. It's, it's, it's great to, to, to be able now to present TD Cinex as a new as a new merger between TechData and Cinex Corporation. Uh, now we are the largest distributor basically across the world with more than $62 billion in, 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 in a business. And Amazon is obviously a strategic partner with a hyper growth. And we have been very focused to working with them to expand that partner ecosystem across solution, ISVs, and service providers. Then has been a very nice experience. Combine these two companies and now have the reach and scale that enable more than 140,000 partners across the world. Wow. And the partner's message here is changing to the new leader. Ruba is up on stage talking about these new partner paths. A lot of changes in a good way. They're bringing people together. What's your guys' take and reaction to AWS's new post posture towards partners. Obviously, the ecosystem is, we see going to be doubling and tripling, we see in size, and also the value proposition is going to be stronger too, and more money making, of course. But the new Amazon's posture with partners, what's your well, reaction? I mean, we were with Ruba just an hour ago. Fantastic, I mean, if I look at the change from when we first got here uh, a few years ago to now, it is beyond comparison. The realization is that uh, technology, and especially what we work with Amazon, is deflationary force, and we need scale to actually drive that across all of our partners to the customers. And um, yeah, I can only see that accelerating now in terms of what uh, Amazon is doing, and actually with the channel and what Ruba is doing, I, I think what's, this is exactly her, in the right direction. What's her message? My message is, uh, this is now channel. This is channel and this is serious. So partners uh, with Amazon uh, equals growth. As we've seen so much transformation in the last couple of years, Sergio, with every business having to become digital to survive, right? And then to eventually thrive and succeed and grow in, in the challenging economic times that we've had. What are some of the, the pivots that TD Cynics has made through your partner program to meet customer needs to accelerate their transformation. Yeah, as you said, has been a significant transformation. I think that in the past was clear what was a technology company and what's an industrial company, et cetera, and those frontiers are blending right now. Then as a consequence, we have been investing in several elements. One is to really increase the capability of the partner network in a way that they can, on one side, provide more solution-oriented uh, uh, activities to those customers to drive either growth or cost optimization. The other element has been verticalization, meaning know the industry where you are playing. We have mm. been investing in the healthcare market, of course, as a consequence of all the demand that has been generating. But at the same time, and we recently announced the competency in the government sector, where we expand drastically our capabilities around specifically the federal, the, and, and non-federal business, but not only in US, but across the world with those elements, then I would say that it's a combination of enhancing the skill, enhancing the knowledge on the industry, and finally provide the tools through our platform 
to enable the partner to operate in a digital way and enable the access of ISVs to digitally and serving the customers end to end. Is that the ISV Experience project that I heard about? ISV experience with SaaS companies? Absolutely. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, ISV is one, ISV experience is one of the components that we use, but, but basically what we are trying to achieve with the ISV is helping in the journey of SaaSification. It's how you transform either a partner that is born in the cloud or a partner that is still in the, in the on-premise side, how you transition to the cloud and enabling how you reach to the end user in a more effective way and how we expose 140,000 partners across the multiple geographies to help those ISVs to reach more customers. It's great, distribu it's great distribution. I mean, this is the business model innovation. Sorry. It's a business model innovation for these ISVs. A absolutely. Um, some of the ISVs, as you can imagine, they're, they're incumbent with us, we work with them. Um, so actually it's finding new ways of consuming technology, uh, but there's uh, thousands of them that actually do not understand how to operate with a channel. And this is the part where we help them with the channel builder program, uh, coach them through the process, help them access the partners and the customers that Sergio was referring to. Let me ask you guys a question. Where's the growth going to come from? I mean, you mentioned ecosystem, more growth. Rubo was mentioned that's where the growth is. They are serious. So you're going to deliver that keynote now. Where do you guys see your growth coming from? Well, to be honest, the growth is unlimited in our <laughs> opinion, right? It's so many areas. The wave is still coming. Yeah, the wave is still yeah. there. You know, when you see still the amount of, of uh, uh, platform that need to be migrated to the cloud, then we have been investing in a significant way in enable capabilities of migration programs from the on-premise to the off-premise. At the same time, we have been expanding geographically because it's still several segments and markets. We operate globally, as an example, we recently launched our public sector capability in Latin America and Europe, expanding those segments. And in addition to that, again, how we bring more ISVs, more solution-oriented driven, then it's many spots of growth. And I think that Amazon message recently recognized more and more the value of nobody have all the solutions, you need this ecosystem playing together to bring those solutions to market. So if I build on that, if we look at the uh, growth in the public cloud last year, was around $40 billion. We expect a similar growth level this year as well. I mentioned about deflationary force, the technology being a deflationary force. Now, everybody knows a lot of businesses out there are going under a lot of challenges. So they have to compete, they have to have the insights, they have to be efficient, and actually, they're going to get a lot of that through the technologies that we're talking about here. The key to that is partners with the right skill sets. What we are seeing is the partners with the skill sets who can participate in that $40 billion growth take a big, big share of it. And you guys are providing a great service. I think when I wrote the story on Friday that I published, one of my premise was is that this next gen cloud is going to lift up more ISVs, mm -hmm. which is kind of a legacy classic, you know, independent software vendor, create new kinds of partners that have platforms or unique solutions for verticals. So the ISV classic definition will still exist. And new customers are emerging. It's got a new dynamic developing. We're seeing people build clouds on top of the cloud, tap the, the, the ecosystem, partner distribution, services. It's a whole new way to build and take something to market. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I think that the beauty of our position in the market is that we are in the center of that ecosystem. Again, we have access to thousands of ISVs, thousands of hardware vendors, the hyperscalers. Then somebody needs to put all those pieces together. That is our role in the market. It's, right? a good, it's a good position to be in. It's a good place to be in. And, <laughs> and enabling those partners now to collaborate with all those entities to bring the solution because the customer is not acquiring technology anymore. They are acquiring a solution to a problem now. And that solution requires multiple components. Last year, no, this year, I'm sorry, you guys were announced as EMEA Distributor of the, of the Year. Congratulations on yeah, that. Yeah, thank you. Talk about that in terms of just the evolution of the partnership. Um, <clears throat> the partnership in EMEA um, is now across our entire geo. Um, the growth 
that we've driven across the EMEA market space is, I think, the reason why we have won it, as well as the competencies that we have built. Now, you were just talking about ISVs, to give you an example. There are many ISVs that sit in EMEA that want to access the US market and vice versa. So where we sit in the middle and enable that, that access, that um, uh, the, 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 the frameworks that they need to move. So those are the kind of things that contribute to uh, the strength in the relationship and what those awards are coming from. Yeah, the, the other critical factor here is, again, how we bring more capillarity in terms of the, the serve to the market to Amazon. And that has been another component of that award that, that we are very thankful. Again, we have been enabling and bringing new, numerous new partners and numerous new end customers that now have access, support, and services, including, uh, again, the competencies that we already described, but including service-oriented uh, businesses like migration, mm -hmm. like cost optimization of the use, et cetera, that now we, through partners, serve to the market. Resident Sergio, I want to ask you guys a question around trust. Trust, if you're a trust broker because you have a lot of services and people and companies to put together, we were just talking about the good position you're in. Trust is a big part of your relationship with your customers. You've got the two sides of your business. You've got one side's the supply side, and you've got the distribution side, and both sides are working together. It requires a lot of trust. What's that look like inside your company? Can you just take a minute to explain? Take a minute to explain what's that like, the culture? Of, of the company and that trust. Yeah, you have. absolutely. And, and that is why the term of trust advisor came to the table, right? Uh, and, and again, for more than 40 years, we have been building this ecosystem, we have been driving that motion, and we have been proving to the market a consistent approach with a strong support to the two tier model. We never, you know, get in opposition to our customers and we enable those customers in a consistent way. Then I think that trust is something that you earn, not something that you ask for. And that is what we are doing day to day basis. Well, congratulations. It's been great, great chatting with you. Challenge time? For the challenge, challenge time. time. All, All right, right so we guys. We have a new I... challenge on theCUBE, a new format. We usually say, yes. at the end of the interview, what's the take on the show? What's the bumper sticker? So think of it like an Instagram reel. Thought leadership, hot take. Each of you spend a minute, 30 seconds to share a hot take, thought leadership, what you think is going on at Amazon, why you're here, what's important. What would you say if you were going to do an Instagram reel right now? Yeah, the, the Amazon enabled a new way to do business and a new transformation of the digital economy. We are here in TDC Next to expand that capability across the segments, enhancing partners to reach to their goals and in users to get those transformations. In, in general, we will provide what is needed and we continue investing to continue growing the capacity across all geographies and all the type of solutions that we deliver. All right, Sergio, you nailed it. Reza, you're up. Your hot take, your sizzle reel. Well, frankly, I think Sergio nailed it. It's about covering the, the geos and taking the competencies and make sure we execute consistently across all of our geos. All right, nailed Cons it. Thanks so much. Consistent execution. Reza Sergio, thank you so much thank for joining so much. John and me on the program, talking about what TD Cynics is, has done since we've last seen you, what you're doing with AWS and the partner ecosystem. We really appreciate you stopping by the set. Thank, thank you, so thank much. you for the time. All right, our pleasure. For our guests and for John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage.